What's going on guys, Matthew Monas here, and this, my friends, is the HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop. This is HP's budget line of gaming devices. This is what you buy if you can't afford the more expensive ones, if you're just getting into gaming and you want something pretty solid. Now, the reason why I like this over the HP Omen 15 is its design. It's pretty much sharing some of the same chassis as the Omen 15, but the big difference is it's clean. It's all black, it's simple, it looks great, there's no orgy of aliens on top of the lid. I can bring this to the coffee shop, sit in the corner, type my stuff, game on at the same time, I don't have to worry about the little girl eating ice cream, running for her life because she sees a predator on top. It's light, 5.15 pounds, so slightly lighter than the HP Omen 15, it's lighter than the Dell G7, but around the same size as the Lenovo Y530. Now this is a laptop you can bring to school because it's fairly light and even the plug itself is very small. I like the way HP is designing their adapters. It looks nice and clean and very comfortable to carry. In terms of ports, on the left hand side we have two USB 3.0 ports, your Noble Lock or Kensington Lock, and a full size SD card slot. On the right hand side we have your headphone jack, we have an RJ45 Ethernet jack, full-size HDMI, another USB 3.0 port, and a USB Type-C that's not Thunderbolt 3. That's something you're gonna have to buy the HP Omen 15 for. Getting inside is super easy, and you can upgrade the 2.5-inch hard drive, which will get your typical mechanical speeds. The other drive is an M2 NVMe SSD. This is also swappable. It's 128 gigabytes in this model, but you have a bunch of selections when you're customizing this configuration. Battery. 52 watt hours, not the biggest battery, but you can get it with a 70 watt hour if you buy the model with a GTX 1060. In terms of battery life, I'm getting about four and a half hours of use in terms of productivity before I need to charge it. In terms of gaming, forget about it, keep it plugged in because you're not gonna get that much battery life. RAM. Two slots, upgradable to 32 gigabytes. CPU and GPU are obviously soldered onto the motherboard. We're running a two fan system with two heat pipes running across the middle and we'll talk about heat a little bit later. The display is 15 inches, it's IPS and it's 60 hertz, but you can buy it with a 144 hertz display or a 4K option if you wanna spend the extra money. Now the 60 hertz display here is very similar to the one on the HP Omen 15. In fact, I'm pretty confident they're using the exact same display panels. So if you don't like the 60 hertz, which doesn't produce the best color accuracy, you can buy the 144 hertz version and get much better color accuracy. The cool thing about this laptop though is it actually comes with Windows Hello. So a lot easier to log in, it's quicker, you don't have to type in a password. Webcam, it's 720p, it looks like this. I love reading the websites of manufacturers that advertise webcams. They're always like, hey, we have this new HP Pixel Sense Ultra HD webcam. No, you don't. It's a potato, it looks like this. It's probably just as bad as every other webcam unless you're buying a Surface device. Sound. Coming out of speakers on the top of the laptop, they actually sound really good. It's being fine-tuned by Bing and Olison, so that means they take care of the equalization settings. It's not super loud, it's not gonna fill up a large room, but it's clean, very clean, nice crisp highs, good mid-range, not that much bass. The keyboard is full size and you do get a numeric keypad. Great for students who go to school, game, maybe gotta crunch some numbers, maybe you're taking financing, you're learning to add for the first time. You have a function row at the top. Those keys are slightly squished. I do wish they were a little bit bigger. And same with the arrow keys. Travel distance is pretty good at 1.5 millimeters. The typing experience is very comfortable. Uh, the keys have a lot of force, giving it a nice feel. Touchpad. Great size, nice horizontal space, fairly accurate. It's not using Windows Precision drivers, it's actually using ELAN drivers. So I do wish HP would switch over to Precision drivers because they do a slightly better job, but overall it's not that bad. Now before I jump into performance, I wanna talk about customization options. HP really allows you to customize this laptop to pretty much any way you want. You can get it with a 1050, 1050 Ti, or a GTX 1060. You can spec it with two hard drives. You can get a bigger battery. The ghost white backlighting. If you don't like it, you can get it in green or ultraviolet for an extra 60 bucks. There's tons of different configuration options. And quite frankly, a lot of budget gamers like that. Now when it comes to performance itself, I did a Twitch live stream. If you're interested in seeing that, link is below. But during that stream, I got a lot of frame drops. The CPU was dipping to 800, 700 megahertz, and I don't know why. My other computer was taking care of all the processing, so it shouldn't have done that. But when I was gaming on it normally, everything was fine. I could run most games comfortably with settings between medium to high settings. Overwatch, 
great frame rates. I played a lot of Fortnite. I also got frame, great frame rates, and same with other games like Battlefield 1. So, something to do with my setup in terms of streaming, but regular gameplay on this laptop is pretty great. Now, when it comes to heat, it does get a little bit toasty. The surface temperatures of the keyboard hovered around 50 degrees Celsius, and I would have loved to see that to be slightly lower. In terms of CPU temps, I did get it to go to 90 degrees quite a few times, but the laptop does a pretty good job of thermal throttling and keeping the temperatures lower so it doesn't overheat. So you're not gonna be boosting to its full potential the entire time, but you're gonna see boosted speeds of between 2.3 to 3.3 gigahertz. So the fans do ramp up on idle. I'm getting about 40 decibels. So it is noticeable if someone's sitting beside you in class, but it's not overbearing. When it is on max though, you're getting around 50 decibels. So this is loud, it is noticeable. And if you wanna hear how it actually sounds, you can find that in my Twitch stream but it's nothing unusual. It's still lower than let's say the Acer Predator Helios 300 or even the Dell G7. So here's the bottom line. The HP Pavilion gaming laptop is a great budget gaming laptop. Sure, it gets a little toasty every once in a while, but it thermal throttles correctly, reducing the temps of the CPU and providing a pretty good gaming experience. I love this design. I actually prefer this over the HP Omen 15. I love the fact you can customize this thing to anything you want to. The only thing it doesn't have is a Thunderbolt 3 port, but if you want that, you can buy the more expensive version, which is the Omen. So that pretty much wraps up my review of the HP Pavilion Gaming Laptop. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button. Hit me up on Discord. If you have any questions, follow me on Instagram for behind the scenes. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.